Sign up today. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. Hopefully you heard that. It sounded awful quiet. Don't know exactly why. Anyway, uh, what do we have going on today? Well, kind of a bounce. Um, I was hoping to get the market pulling back in a, with lighter volume into the three-day weekend instead of uh, going higher on lighter volume in a three-day weekend. Now, of course, uh, market's going to be probably very light volume tomorrow. Uh, as uh, one of the uh, folks in the den pointed out, which I didn't think about, uh, bond market was closing a little early tomorrow. That'll put a little bit more damper on the volume. So uh, that's about uh, what we're looking at here, and that is that uh, uh, we are uh, thinking that, you know, you could get kind of a bearish tone going into this three-day weekend. Um, I've been thinking all along that uh, after this bounce, which we sold yesterday, uh, pre-market or at the open, depending on what you did uh, for the short term, that we were probably just going to have more oscillations. But eventually, we're going to see the market quiet down. And we're going to get back to 20 and 30 point moves in the S&P and five or six billion shares a day, uh, maybe seven billion shares a day. That's going to take a little while. But uh, you'll overshoot to the upside. You'll overshoot to the downside. You'll overshoot to the upside. But eventually, you're going to come down and find uh, the market discovery of real prices. And that is going to be what everybody's thinking about. Uh, so we're going to have a little higher, a little lower, a little higher, a little lower, but, uh, eh, hang on to it. But, uh, market probably made a high yesterday and, uh, we'll probably try to push into that with lighter volume. Um, I would hate to exceed it tomorrow. That would be rather at least short-term bearish, not long-term. Uh, but we shall see. And again, Ideally, I'd like to see the market pull back on light volume into the close tomorrow. We, uh, we'll see. Anyway, short term, I don't think I have a real edge on the market. Uh, long term, I am fairly bullish, but we'll have to see how a lot of this plays out. Uh, but uh, I think we're probably going to get uh, or looking to get a uh, setup going into options expiration. And that will tell me a great deal more options expire for the monthlies in April on the 17th. Of course, we're closed tomorrow. Uh, but, uh, you know, we are getting or you know, will get, let me put it that way today, uh, a better snapshot uh, as uh, the market goes delta neutral. Another reason why I'm not, ex uh, well, at least the option market makers go delta neutral. That's, again, why I'm not in a big hurry to put any positions on until I get the data and I look at it tonight. Even when I do that, there's not going to be a lot of volume tomorrow. So there's not going to be a lot of edge to be put in generally. Now, maybe we get some kind of news event that I'm on uh, that no one knows right now, but the market's not really looking for that. Uh, ideally, I would expect market makers to sell a lot of puts and calls and have the market go kind of quiet. That's the last thing anybody probably wants uh, at TFNN or in the den. But that is a high probability from what I saw at options at 1 p.m. today. And that is they're going to sell both sides of it. And the market's going to probably trade around 2700 in the next Friday. Now, that could change at the very end of the day because about half of all that action gets reported in the last 10 minutes. So that's when I, I really don't spend or put a lot of positions on until I get to look at that data tonight. But uh, we'll talk about it tomorrow. But, uh, you know, if, if they could, 
they'd sell with fairly high uh, premiums, puts and calls, and just have the market go sideways. At least the market makers would. I don't know if they believe that they can even hold the market 10 e level with all this cash uh, kind of spilling around. And again, you know, the Fed, Treasury, everybody has been, uh, it's kind of been running around with a gas can, throwing gas on anything that they can find, and uh, then throwing sparklers around. Pretty hard to be bearish in the short term until those gas fires burn out. And of course, uh, gas burns pretty quick. And then you're left with what the reality is uh, below that gas fire. And of course, uh, when I was in uh, Boy Scouting, uh, they called it scout juice, cheating, throwing a little bit of uh, gasoline or lighter fluid on that wood to get it going instead of using uh, dried wood or uh, even getting wood on the fire that could dry out why it was burning. But uh, we shall see. Anyway, uh, as we start the show, we'd like to check in with volumes in the market. And, of course, right now, like I said, uh, Going to start seeing the volume really decrease over the next, uh, well, what do we have, an hour and 45 minutes today and the six and a half hours tomorrow. So eight hours. Uh, but uh, 6.7 billion shares. I think we had about 8.5 uh, billion shares yesterday at this time. Ended up with, uh, what, I think it was almost close to 14 billion shares by the end of the day. So we've had a lot of the shorts uh, get squeezed out, quiet, not moving down, volumes still pushing up. But again, uh, if you're a big uh, Richard Wyckoff fan, um, you don't want to see the market push into the close with light volume. Uh, did I hear some audio? Eh, no, I did not. Okay. Okay. Good question. Uh, Dave ZM. Uh, film. Uh, okay. So what else do we have? Um, got a little bit. I guess we can do a little history and then we'll move on to other things when we return. On this day in 1983, John Scully is named president and CEO of Apple Computer after Steve Jobs convinced him to leave his position as president of PepsiCo. Why Steve Jobs wanted the position of president for himself, then CEO Mike Marcula did not think Jobs was ready to take on that responsibility. And of course, uh, it was 19, uh, late 1986 that uh, John Scully forced out Steve Jobs. And of course, it was probably the best thing that Steve Jobs could have happened to him at the time. He was uh, well above his pay grade in making decisions at Apple. Uh, as anybody that wants to be a revolutionary, uh, generally uh, you get a lot of bullets shut back at you. And uh, he didn't have uh, what Wall Street in 1980, they're not like today. He probably would have been able to get away with it all today. But uh, at that time, eh, they weren't going to let him do it. Uh, it blew up when he actually wanted to license uh, Mac software like uh, Windows did and uh, Microsoft did. That was a bridge too far for all of them in 1983. We'll be back in a minute. If you're not currently using the Taz Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The Taz Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, Taz understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the Taz Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the Task Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And, oh, what are we at there? Oh, did I have that? Let me move it. Got a lot of people asking questions here. Uh, oh, wanted to do the question of the day, so we're going to do that, and we'll answer that later in the show. What is the national animal of Ireland and has been since the 1400s? It is still today. They have not changed it. But what is the national animal of Ireland and has been since the 1400s? We'll answer that later. Okay, what else do we have? Oh, go pop up a chart here and start looking at stuff. Uh, can you look at KO? We'll look at that. Do, do, do. Okay. Uh, get this cleaned up a little bit here. Coca-Cola Company has come back up uh, to resistance. Do, do, do. And we got a call already. Uh, Coca-Cola well, you're up uh, with 21 million shares to, uh, compared to 32 million shares uh, back on the 17th. You gap down on 28 million shares against that 21 million shares. So kind of the easy money looks like it's over. Uh, you did break through uh, previous confluence levels, though. So $44 looks like support. Uh, Going to go to Max in Houston. How you doing today, Max? I'm doing just fine. I have a question on FireEye. Uh -huh. I, I don't know why I'm stuck on thinking about it, but I, I <laughs> since I'm working from home now, I can listen to you guys all day pretty much. But um, what is your opinion on FireEye currently? Um, I talked a couple of weeks ago about zero trust uh, networking. Yeah. I don't know if you heard that conversation with Tom O'Brien. Yeah, yeah. In, in fact, and these guys, um, yeah, it was in the afternoon, and, and that's what I use. Yeah. So, but it, no, it I, was, I thought it, FireEye was a target to be acquired. It probably is. The question is, can anybody get the money to do it right now? Right? Okay. I mean, if they would have, they were a big uh, uh, kind of a target. They probably still are. But at this point, probably for the next few months, <laughs> money uh, and getting money to buy out another company, unless you're a huge company, is problematic. 
So if we're looking at, uh, let's say, other companies in the same space or Symantec or some of these companies that don't have $280 million or billion dollars in the bank like Apple or, you know, if you have like 20 or 30 billion in the cash, if you're Microsoft, you can buy it. But if you are somebody more like uh, Cisco that may need to borrow the money or think you need to borrow the money, make your books look good, it's more problematic. And since nobody probably in the big Apple, uh, Microsoft, uh, Oracle, um, those kind of big uh, companies are probably going to buy FireEye, the thought is that until money becomes easier and we start seeing M&A come back, it's going to be kind of hard. I think this thing kind of hangs around 10 bucks for a while. Uh, as soon as you start seeing M&A come back out and those Monday buyouts come in, I think the stock will get very active again. But right now, okay. no one's really uh, thinking about spending lots of money or being able to borrow lots of money. Let's me put, let me put it that way. Uh, CEOs are the worst when it comes to buying things at the top. And when they should be right now thinking uh, and having that money already locked up to go buy something. They should have, you know, two months ago at the heights of the market, when the, they knew the market probably going to pull back at least some, they should have had that cash ready to go so that they could go out and shop when at the lows. But again, if you're trying to borrow money from somebody to buy yet another company, the last thing the bank wants to do when everybody's screaming is lend money. It's just yeah. the opposite. They lend money at the highs when they shouldn't, and they don't lend money at the bottoms when it uh, it has the biggest chance of paying being paid back as things get better. So, yeah. ten bucks for a while. Watch Mondays when you start seeing Monday mergers come back up uh, for smaller companies like this. Not you know one big company buying another giant company. Uh, to me, that is going to be the sign that these smaller cap stocks uh, that have been buyout candidates will come back into focus. All right, no problem. Does that well, make thank sense? You. I appreciate your show. Does that make sense? Yeah. No. 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 I'll just keep my hands in my pockets. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I no think problem. we're going to see it. And again, there's going to be lots of phases. We're going through, I yeah. think this week we're through the first phase, which is the worst of it. Then we're going to move into yeah. a kind of secondary phase where everybody's figuring out when everything can open back up. Then we're going to get into the third phase where everybody's going to look for the recovery. And that somewhere between that middle of the second to the beginning yeah. of the third is when the money's going to start actually flowing. And that's when you're probably going to want to see and be very active in these smaller uh, tech stocks that could be bought out. Um, FireEye, probably 16 to 18 bucks. So there's a nice premium on it. Uh, the downside is how long do you hold onto that stock and take the risk uh -huh. of another bad day in the market? Yeah. And that's the problem. So I would just say wait until you start seeing the big buyouts on Mondays. I sure will. Well, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it. Bye. Uh, did a joke. What else do we have? Uh, oh, well, anyway, thanks for the call, Max. Okay. Six point, well, let's call it seven billion shares as we get to here. Um, other questions. Did I get it? Uh, da -da -da -da. Question here. I've been told that security software providers can be lumped into two different categories on a general way in which the software is designed to work. Is that true? Can you explain the two types? Yes. One is uh, a giant castle wall. Once that castle wall is breached, you've failed. Uh, the other one uh, we talked about with Tom O'Brien was zero trust, that no matter where you go, you're assumed to uh, be a threat to the system. And so literally everywhere you go and everywhere you uh, uh, and everything you do uh, is graded. And as you do things uh, that may be more problematic, like uh, moving or calling from an IP that hasn't been used before or a variety of different things, your risk profile goes up and it gets harder and harder to do stuff. You get, uh, you know, uh, you have to be... Uh, 
you know, they'll send you a number that you have to type in from your cell phone. There's all the things, uh, double redundancy, triple redundancy, uh, as you do things that tend to be more problematic in the system. And uh, that's what I liked about FireEye. It never really caught on, mostly for the exact same reason that we saw Zoom kind of blow up uh, this week with news about how they have no security. Literally, the last thing anybody thinks about is security. They are so busy on trying to get a product out the door uh, that they don't get, uh, they get red-faced when they get blown up like Zoom did this week. We'll be back in a minute. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find market insights under trading newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I had a good question during the break, and that is uh, companies that are in the kind of zero trust area. Sailpoint Technologies is a company that I've made money on in the past. Uh, it's a recent IPO. FireEye is a few years older. Um, but uh, those are both smaller companies. Um, in 2015, there was a big paper from a guy that, white paper that came out from uh, a guy in Google that started the whole kind of zero trust idea going forward. And most of the companies, the big companies, all do it internally. So if you're Facebook 
or uh, Amazon or Google or Microsoft, you're already doing all that internally. So these small companies are actually going to and trying to get the business from these non-tech companies. You know, the S&P 500 guys, uh, Caterpillar, probably not going to spend a lot of time internally on writing this kind of stuff. So you go after those. But if you're a big tech company, the big problem is that you're doing it all internally and you're doing it all internally for everybody that uses your system uh, as a web service. So these companies uh, are going after the loose bricks in the non-tech company space. And I think there's a lot of business for them. But uh, as I said before, in Zoom, even in smaller tech space, the last thing anybody does is work with security. How many cameras have you gone in and seen at, at a convenience store and wondered if the thing ever worked, much less it's working today? Security is the last thing that everybody spends money on, and it should be the first. But you know what? As long as they can continue getting away uh, with paying fines and this quarter looks a little better, it's going to be it. Eventually, it will be mandated either by insurance. Uh, insurance companies will quit paying all these payouts for getting hacked, and it'll happen. But uh, Zoom's a good example. Uh, that's it. Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to back up the truck for a quick upside move on Intel. Well, I'm not one to back up the truck. I'm not a truck backer upper. And uh, you know that uh, in England, you know how trucks, when they back up, they go beep, 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 beep. Uh, in Europe, they don't do that anymore. I don't know how many people you know, because you hear that all day long, you just learn to ignore it. They found out that actually playing white noise is much more effective. Uh, people will look for it always because they think they're, they're either peeing their pants or getting peed on uh, or getting wet. Uh, that is the first thing people look at, and they don't discount it. But uh, that being said, you got the squeeze, I think, in Intel. I, I don't like... Intel's management. Uh, I think AMD is going to make a run at their um, uh, server business along with some other companies, and I think it's going to hurt them. I horribly dislike the current CEO, uh, and I, I, until he's gone, that's it. I think that Intel could be a $100 company uh, much like Microsoft was a $20 company and now $165 company if they get rid of this CEO. It is rare that I speak about CEOs at all. There's probably five that I care about in all the market. Most of them are just uh, taking a warm seat in a business that's already been designed, and all they have to do is make sure that the right people are there and everybody shows up. They're not really doing anything. They're going to get paid a whole lot. They're not that intelligent. Uh, there's some that are just horrible, and when they get replaced, the company can go much further. Intel is one of those. I just do not like it until they get rid of it. But uh, if you want a model, look at Microsoft when they got rid of Bomber. Uh, Intel could be the same thing. In the meantime, AMD is busy eating their lunch left and right, uh, and I don't think anything changes. Uh, they have some uh, Intel has some great technology in the in the corners. Uh, why they don't ship it is beyond me, but the exact same thing happened on Microsoft. Bomber held all kinds of stuff up. Um, and it might be because he made such horrible decisions like trying to buy Yahoo and everything else. Microsoft literally dodged an $8 billion uh, mistake by uh, not on purpose. I'm not exactly sure who finally got in there and told Bomber he was a moron. But, of course, they'd already bought Skype for $8 billion that could have been duplicated for maybe half a billion, maybe a billion. I don't a lot of times understand buyouts, especially if it's software, if you can do the exact same thing yourself and do it for a eighth of the cost or maybe a fifth of the cost. Uh, Skype was one of those things that anybody with technical ability and cash could have built for significantly less. Um, but uh, when you see people wanting to buy big companies out, not small ones, 
that tells you a lot about the CEO. And uh, I don't think there's a lot more happening in Intel. Uh, they've got technology in the background. Question is, when will they have the political will to drive it into the marketplace? But I think it, it could be big. But uh, my guess is that everybody will get tired of this backstabber that's in there now. Uh, get rid of them, and uh, it'll probably take off and go far. Uh, okay. The latest AMD microprocessors impress you. Um, they don't just impress me. They literally, you know, right now, if you look at what people that are playing high-end games and uh, other computers are building on Newegg, AMD's got 90% of the business. Their new processor for mobile uh, laptops absolutely destroys at half the price the current to high-end processor that Intel has. Um, Intel just looks at this uh, consumer part of the business and as a bean counter, he's going, okay, if I don't spend a lot of time on this, I can save some cash. Uh, unfortunately, he's kind of the uh, Spock to what really needs, uh, what you really need in a company, and that is uh, a in tech anyway, is you need a Captain Kirk, you need a risk taker, you need somebody that knows the lay of the land. Uh, the bean counters are there to tell you no. And don't expect a different result as long as the bean counters run the show. From Scully uh, eviscerating Apple through 1992, uh, from uh, Bomber uh, making sure that Microsoft stock never went anywhere from uh, 2002 to tw uh, 2012, you can count on those guys to make sure that nothing goes wrong. But in their haste to make sure that nothing goes wrong, Nothing really goes right. The old story is uh, you can't expect your ship to come in unless you send it out. And, of course, those guys look at a ship going out and go, well, it may not return. It's going to cost some money, and it's going to make this quarter look bad. So I'm not going to do it. And that's generally uh, what happens for a while until the market gets mad, and then they throw the bomb out, and somebody they'll bring in that actually is a risk taker, uh, and they can move the ball forward yet again. Captain Kirk on risk. <laughs> oh, oh, there's actually a video. I'll have to look at that during the break. Okay, uh, we're going to the break. What's the national animal of Ireland? And has been since the 1400s. We'll answer that question when we come back. And what else will we do? Oh, we'll look at more charts. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. 
TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD. Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And I had a question in the den of uh, uh, NVIDIA had a, I mean, lucked into the machine learning part of the business. And they had a summer intern who I think in 2009, maybe 2010, wrote a library so that machine learning could use uh, the video cards, GPUs, uh, to rapidly accelerate machine learning. And right now, it's probably... If you used a regular processor, uh, GPUs can probably accelerate, I don't know, 500 times faster than a, a, uh, a particular processor, maybe 1,000 times. It's hard to actually know because it keeps moving faster every day. Uh, but uh, he didn't make a lot of money. As an intern, you get paid uh, what they pay you, uh, if anything. And again, uh, you know, they own everything that you do. But uh, I think the guy later cleaned up going to other companies like Intel, Microsoft, and others that were all building their own uh, GPU hardwares that they may use internally but are not retail selling. And uh, he helped them design uh, the drivers and the software for it. Uh, since it's all public domain anyway, uh, the driver from NVIDIA uh, was given away. It isn't like they sold it. They sold a lot of video cards for it. Uh, of course, but uh, again, I think he made all of his cash uh, being somebody that knew the ins and outs of it. But uh, anybody that actually could have downloaded the software would have had the source code. Uh, so, you know, the, the big question is, that they needed to get from this guy is why did he do it so, a certain way? Uh, why didn't he do it this other way? And why, you know, what ways did he try that didn't work? Because uh, that's generally the – it's the secret sauce uh, that you get from some guy like that that spent a year or so trying. Okay, uh, get to the answer. What is the national uh, uh, animal of Ireland? It's the unicorn, believe it or not, since 1400. A unicorn. I, I couldn't believe it. If there's a country that you would think it would be kind of, uh, you know – some other mystical uh, thing like a, a gnome or a, an elf or somebody standing next to a pot of gold. Nah, nay, nay, nay. It is a unicorn from Ireland. Okay, what else do we have going on? Oh, a question about Microsoft. Is it still the leader? And uh, I think it is. But again, you're, like I said earlier, you're right in to the maximum resistance of the market. You reversed yesterday, you got a doji today. What you won't, don't really want to see is continued light volume, volume like we have now and a little bit more volume. You could pull back down to 155-ish, maybe 157-ish. Uh, looks like uh, resistor or support uh, for Microsoft. I'm not expecting a whole lot of downside in the market, uh, but I am waiting for a pullback. Okay see what else we have here. 
Okay. Uh, okay, a few more other things. Did I answer everybody? I know someone wanted me to look at ZM, and I was trying to a, uh, if there, I looked at KO. I did, just earlier. Maybe not spend enough time on it. We can go back and look at it. Someone wanted, uh, wanted ZM, and I was looking for an ETF to match ZM, if anybody in the den knows it. Um, you did ZM. I did ZM. Okay. What was the what was the ETF? Okay. Uh, <laughs> he used a unicorn to dig for gold. Okay. Uh, Coca-Cola Company, we're back up into... Uh, the heavy resistance level, uh, you had 28 million shares on the 16th. Uh, you're back into that uh, yesterday with 21 million shares. Today, you got 10 million shares. Again, we've kind of come up here. We're coming, coming out of volume. You either want two things. You either want to pull back on light volume or the thing just to go sideways for a while. My guess is that you could pull back a little and go sideways. And that would probably be the most bullish thing. But we need to consolidate these big moves off the lows. And hopefully that happens next week. But like I said, I'll know tonight when I look at the options, if everybody goes dead flat, we could have a very flat market for another week or so. Uh, and that would drive everybody batty who's used to absolute massive amounts of volatility. Um, do you see this market in a bear rally like 2001 to 2003? Well, the, what it was, in March, whatever, uh, 2003, whatever it was, 675 on the S&P cash or somewhere around there, 679 uh, in that March, April area of 2003. I don't even have to look at the chart. I remember it so vividly. Uh, but that started in 2000, not 2001, really. Uh, by April, uh, you'd already made the second high of 2000 and were continuing to go lower and lower and lower um, all the way through. I mean, you, you know, 2001, you had 9-11. That really took it down the next level. But you'd really started to sell off in 2000. So I'm going to say the bear market of April of 2000 through uh, March-ish of 2003, uh, that would be it. So... Uh, do I see a bear market rally? No, I think that we have a good rally. I think that what happened was that literally all the extra uh, huspa of the market got sucked out all in about 10 days. Now, it's going to take us what it'll seem like for forever to get there. And when we look and turn around looking back, it will seem like a blink of an eye. So the time will all be relative going forward. I don't think we have to go back and test 19,000 on the S&P cash, or I mean on the Dow. I don't think we need to go back and test the lows in the S&P. But I do think that there will be a lot of back and forth. Uh, but uh, 3,000 on the, uh, on the uh, S&P before the end of the year with all the stimulus we have, not unthinkable. But again, I suspect a lot of that's going to be Septemberish, where we get everything back moving. Uh, everybody's going to be wanting to get back to work. They're not going to complain about going to work anymore, for a while anyway, maybe a couple of months. Uh, let's see what else do we have. Do you see a bear market? No. Intel, uh, do I want to back it up? The answer is no. Uh, yesterday, this is a pretty good volume. R-E-K. Um, short real estate. I'll think about it during the break. I hate to come in real late to the party. But uh, the chart doesn't look bad. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And I have to apologize to Ireland because uh, for some reason I got it in my head that that was national uh animal was uh, the unicorn but it's not it's scotland it's scotland as uh, scotty would say the toilets have overflowed into the warp drive captain we don't have a plunger but uh the uh, scotland uh is the history the unicorn is the history of scotland it says i just i heard that the other day and of course you you get one thing stuck in your mind and uh, yeah, that's it. It's Scotland, not Ireland. I I I, I stand corrected. Uh, ProShares uh, short real estate up here with uh, a question for our guys. You're down on very light volume today. I'm thinking we're probably going to get a little bit of a retrace. I don't know how fast they're going to get loans going again. I can see. Um, why you would possibly want to be sh short real estate, but I mean you're right at well, you're right at support. I just generally I like to get in front of these once the story's out there. Generally, I tend to lose a lot of money when everything's known. I would have much rather been, you know, in this uh, going back to the uh, low here of what was that? February 21st, 
Uh, you got your, you know, you started getting your ABCs on that. Um, just kind of late to the party. And I don't like to trade those things, but that's me. But uh, yeah, could you see something here? Eh, could be in a range between what we see here today, which is about 14 bucks to 17 bucks. But I don't know. Uh, watch this market. If it goes up with very light volume into tomorrow, probably when we come back Monday, there will be hell to pay. But this one potential scenario. So when you can, not when you have to, we will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.